Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. It is such a pleasure to see you all here this evening, those of you who have joined us in our Mishkan, and to those of you who are joining us online, thank you so much for joining us from your homes. I'm Rabbi Samuel Kay. I'm joined by our cantorial soloist, Lindy Rivers. Our musical accompanist tonight is Jason on the piano, doing an amazing job as always. And uh, I am particularly pleased to announce that my colleagues have returned uh, a particular Shabbat blessing for me that our cantor is here, our senior rabbi is here, Rabbi McCarroll is here all to join together in the joy of Shabbat together. You know, we all come to this space for our own purposes and for our own reasons with our own needs. And sometimes we come for Shabbat as a tradition and sometimes we come to Shabbat in joy and sometimes we come because it is the medicine that we need to heal our spirits and our souls. And so for whatever reason you have come tonight to celebrate Shabbat with us, I thank you for being here, and I welcome you to this sacred space, and I am glad to see you. I want to offer up a prayer from the modern liturgist, liturgist Alden Solovey, who writes about the Siddur, that sometimes I hold my Siddur against my chest, pressed to my heart, and it is like a dressing on a wound. They speak to each other, in a language as sweet as love and as simple as hope, as ancient as God's Holy Spirit. As it hovers over the endless deep, calling through the darkness, it summons the light and it receives my prayer. Together we are yearning, ever yearning, to praise and sanctify that holy name. Let us do that together this evening. Let us do that together in the spirit of Shabbat. Yadid Nefesh, page 105. It is my pleasure to invite Eve and Mark Madras to join us here to represent our congregation. And for the rest of us, there are more sets of Nehrot, there are more sets of candles to light. We need Nachshons, we need first people to jump in and come light the candles and bring light into this world and help us kindle the lights of the Shabbat. Yes. That's on. You can just say. Shabbat shalom. 
sharing is great. Amen. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Kishonu B'mitzvotav V'tzivanu V'tzivanu L'hadlik Ner Shel Page 108, Shiru Ladonai Shir Hadash. Shiru Ladonai Shir Hadash. Shiru Ladonai Koha Aret. Shiru Ladonai Barhu Shimbo. Basru Miyom Liyom Yeshua To. Oh, Safru Vagoyim Kivoto. Page 111, play to the eternal with lyre, with lyre, and the voice of song. Zamru Ladunai Bechinor. Zamru Ladunai Bechinor. Bechinor Vekosimra. Bechatzotzrot Vekoshofar. Ha real if ne ha melecha donai. Yiram ha yamumo. Te vel vi osveva. Ne ha rot yim ha uchav. Yachad ha rim yirad ne nu. If ne
turn to page 113, We're skipping around a little bit. Mies Mor le David. Mies Mor le David, Avul Adonai Menelim, Avul Adonai Kavod Vaoz, Avul Adonai Kivod Shemo, Ishtach If you're in certain small synagogues in certain parts of the city, and I'll give this the, the uh, attention that it's due, and you're on the men's side, everyone gets up and starts to parade around in a circle, hand on hand and shoulder on shoulder. It's very, it's very sweet and exciting. Um, we can try it. We can try it next time. Yeah. Absolutely. We can dance around the room. Uh, as I finished my Talmud class last week, we reached a section of uh, Tractate Shabbat where the great rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and his son emerge from a cave where they've been hiding for a grand total of around 14 years. And last time they emerged from the cave, a year beforehand, they were very upset with the world. The world was not living up to their incredibly high standards. And so immediately upon exiting this time, though, they ran into an old man who was running around with two sets of myrtle branches, which are famous for their beautiful, lovely smell. And they turn and they say, why do you have two sets of myrtle branches? And he says, to honor Shabbat, lichvod Shabbat. And they turn and say back, well, you know, one set of myrtle branches would probably be enough. And he says, no, no, no. One is for Shamor, and one is for Zachor. One is for guard, and one is for remember. And these two great rabbis, they calm down and say, well, maybe actually the world isn't quite as lacking in piety as we thought it was. It's a familiar ch passage. It's a bit challenging as well. We're used to this duality around Shabbat, the two chalot, the two sets of candles, shamor v'zachor, b'dibor echad. But have we all forgotten to put out maybe myrtle branches? No. No, I don't think so. I think the takeaway, and the takeaway that I offered in my Talmud class was actually, was that sometimes there's a difference between what the tradition establishes and the personal demonstration of faith, the personal demonstration of how we connect to God and the way things that we have, quote unquote, always done it are not necessarily the ways that it always needs to be done. So I would ask you to go inside and consider for just a moment in your heart and your memory and your mind, what is your Shabbat practice, your family's Shabbat practice, which is the myrtle branch, which is the thing that until someone comes in as a guest at your table, maybe they don't even realize is something, or maybe something you don't even realize is just happening in your home. I can tell you that growing up, I knew it was Shabbat when I heard the blender go, because that meant my grandparents had arrived, mm -hmm. and it was time for Shabbat margaritas <laughs> and Shabbat chips and salsa. And a friend of mine once told me that Shabbat is for pizza because a wise red-headed rabbi from Cincinnati had told her parents, as long as it's a tradition, it's a Shabbat tradition. You just have to keep it going. And so it's in that spirit that we turn to L'Chad on page 115 
and we continue our grand tradition. We link ourselves to this generation, we see ourselves in the past, and we welcome the Sabbath bride into our future. Shambord Vizachor, Bidi Borechal, Hishmiyonu, El Hamyuchal, Adonai Echal, Ushemo Echal, L'Shem Ba bo ker hasdeh 
Shabbat Tov Lehodot L'Adonai Ulezamer L'Shimcha Elyon Ulezamer L'Shimcha Elyon Kisimatan Yadonai Befalecha Memaseh Yadecha We rise to the words of Baruch Hu. El Chai Bekayam Tamid Imloch Alenu Leolam Vaed Baruch Ata Aronai Hamariv Aravim Ahava Tolam Beji Asir mi menu le olamim Baruch atadonai O heva mo Yisrael Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Baruch Shem Kivot, 
All this we hold to be true and sure. You alone are our God, there is none else, and we are Israel, your people. You are our sovereign, you deliver us from the hands of oppressors and save us from the fists of tyrants. You do wonders without number, marvels that surpass our understanding. You give us our life, by your help we survive all who seek our destruction. You did wonders for us in the land of Egypt, miracles and marvels in the land of Pharaoh. You led your people Israel out forever to serve you in freedom. When your children witnessed your power, they extolled you and gave you thanks. Willingly they enthroned you, and full of joy, Moses, Miriam, and all Israel sang this song. To heal it, oh, say fair, no, not to heal it, oh, say fair. Malachut, ha, rau, vanecha, bouquet, am, leaf, name, moshe, say, li, anu, viamaru, adam, na. We read together on page 126. Grant that we may lie down in peace, Adonai our God, and raise us up, O Sovereign, to life renewed. Spread over us the shelter of your peace, Guide us with your good counsel, and for your name's sake, be our help. Shield us from hatred and plague. Keep us from war and famine and anguish. Subdue our inclination to evil. O God, our guardian and helper, our gracious and merciful sovereign, give us refuge in the shadow of your wings. Guard our coming and our going, that now and always we may have life and peace. Praised are you, Adonai, whose shelter of peace is spread over us, over all your people, Israel, and over Jerusalem. Who froze aleinu sukat shlomecha, baruch atah Adonai. Ha-pore sukat shalom aleinu, v'okol amu Yisrael, v'al Yerushalayim. V'shamru v'nei Yisrael, Hashabbat, la sotet hashabbat le dorotam, buried olam. Visham ruvene Israel, et hashabbat, la sotet hashabbat. 
ata lacha chayot meitim, Baruch ata Adonai, mechaye ha meitim. Ata kadosh v'shem cha kadosh, u'kadoshim b'chol yom yom haleluch ha-sela, Baruch ata Adonai, ha-el ha-kadosh. We continue with private prayer on the page and in our hearts. As a Canadian community, we are engaged in acts of healing, truth and reconciliation, a process that we know takes both time and continued efforts. As a community, we acknowledge the lands on which we live and the people who were here living and caring for this land and its inhabitants before us. Our sacred spaces are hosted on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Haudenosaunee, the Ojibwa Chippewa, and the Wendat peoples. And this land is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people from across Turtle Islands. And while Toronto was covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit, we acknowledge that not all treaties were made with fairness in mind, 
for each party. We are grateful to gather on this land. We are grateful to strengthen our community, and we are committed to supporting the 94 calls to action, especially the 60th call, which asks leaders of all faiths to develop and teach curriculum which holds respect for indigenous spirituality. This way, may we all be a part of the healing in our greater Canadian community. Tonight, our prayers for healing include the names of the following members of Holy Blossom Temple. Johanna Falk, Hannah Bakito, Sarah Leah Bat Moshe, Mayor of Naomi, Miriam Bat Benjamin Vesara Leah, Fredja Marmer, Joel Sears, Sima Bat Chaim Vachaya Sara, Gitil Yaakova Bat Shmuel Vesara, Samantha Tylee Bader, Moshe Gershon Ben Baruch Shalom Chaim Varucha Leah, Ari Solomon Gegel, Akiva Ben Lina, Hanoch Ben Pinchas Esther, and Marvin Goodman. If you would like to share the name of a loved one so we may include them in our prayers, I invite you to do so at this time. David Rubin. working at a bar in Chicago. One of my coworkers was an indie music virtuoso, one of those kinds of people who was always listening to the most up and coming bands and artists, incredibly tuned into the music scene. We had very different tastes, but one time as we were closing up, he put on a song and I loved it. I turned to him and I said, this is really good. And he said, yeah, they're amazing, a once in a generation talent. You really should have gone to see them, because the band broke up last week. <laughs> this evening, as the sun sets, it will become the ninth of Av, Tisha B'Av. It is a minor fast day. And due to the brilliance of our rabbis, whenever a fast day, other than Yom Kippur, falls on Shabbat, it is postponed until the following day. So while tonight begins Tisha B'Av, we won't begin fasting until Sunday morning. And having just given you all of those disclaimers, you might be thinking, well, Rabbi, if the, if the rabbis didn't want you to talk about Tisha B'Av on Shabbat, why are you doing it? And the answer to that is actually pretty simple. It's because I want you to hear about the band. I don't want you to hear about the band only after it's broken up. So here's the big question. Why observe Tisha B'Av? It's the question I think I heard the most during my time in rabbinical school. It's a question I constantly hear from colleagues in the field and from many educated Jews who notice that there is a dissonance around this observance in many Jewish circles. Tisha B'Av marks the destruction of the temples in Jerusalem, and it also marks the beginning of exile. And the antipathy towards this fast day seems to come from two arguments coming around those ideas. And the first one is this, that the destruction of the temple actually leads to the ascension of rabbinic Judaism and the adaptation of Judaism to fit a world without a centralized place of worship. We would not be here without the loss of the temple. The survival of Judaism as a global religion instead of as a localized cult practice is actually rooted 
in destruction. And it also goes almost without saying that progressive Jews are not particularly interested in seeing the return of the sacrificial cult. It could be equated to when a dear friend comes to you, one who is married and has a beautiful family and is distraught, pining for their very first lost love. And you want to comfort them because they're obviously hurting, but you're also very confused. Why are you so held up on something from so long ago? If you hadn't been heartbroken, then maybe you would never have gone on that trip or taken that class which led you to your passion, which led you to your amazing spouse and those gorgeous children. But every person knows the appeal of unfulfilled fantasy, of nostalgia for a time gone by, a nostalgia so strong that it can cause heartbreak. The second argument that Tisha B'Av leads to the exile from our land and 2,000 years of powerlessness. But in modernity, as the generation which is blessed to be alive during the creation existence of the state of Israel, forced exile is over. Until my grandfather's final day on earth, it never failed to please and delight him that he could just go to Israel whenever he wanted, even if he wasn't going to take the opportunity because he was a proud diaspora Jew. And from a Zionist perspective, and I've heard this more than once from my Israeli friends, Tisha B'Av is an odd fast to continue to hold on to since um, we're back. And one Israeli rabbi I know actually wanted to host a feast day instead of a fast day. Because yes, once upon a time, Tisha B'Av was a day of loss. But God has restored Zion's fortunes, redeemed us like dreamers, Shir hamalot peshuv Adonai et shivat Zion ha'inu kecholim. To him, it was offensive, in fact, bordering on blasphemy, to continue to observe Tisha B'Av as is. And as he explained it to me with one hand on my shoulder, he said, Chaim Shmuel, Shiva ends and Shloshim ends. God doesn't say mourn forever. God says, remember. So why? Why hold a day of mourning for one event, which is we as a movement and as a community accept as a necessary moment for our own existence, and for a period that we gratefully acknowledge has come to an end? And sometimes the answer to these sorts of questions is we do things because they're our tradition, even if we don't personally agree with them anymore. But the most common answer I've actually heard is that Tisha B'Av is no longer just about the temple and just about the exile. Because during our long wanderings, the rabbis made Tisha B'Av a catch-all day for all of the sufferings of the Jewish people, both in the Tanakh and in their own era. The golden calf happened on Tisha B'Av. The report of the spies happened on Tisha B'Av. The failure of the Bar Kokhba revolt, Tisha B'Av. And as continu history continues, the list continues. First Crusade, expulsion from England, expulsion from Spain, founding of the Inquisition, and even tragic events which lead up to both world wars, all on Tisha B'Av. The Shem Amro, Erev Rav Taylor Barishel, a teaching in the name of my spouse, if not for Tisha B'Av, our calendar would be filled to the brim with days dedicated to tragedy sadness, and loss. Instead, we've coalesced them all into a single day. Tisha B'Av is a day for communal Jewish mourning, no matter which communal loss you are mourning, whether that is the unspeakable brutality of the Nazis or the forced expulsion of the Sephardic Jews from their homes after the founding of the State of Israel, the loss of lives to terror attacks and war, or as I saw in an invitation just this week, the feeling of powerlessness in the face of climate crisis. Tisha B'Av does not need to be about the literal destruction our people faced 2,000 years ago. It can be about every destruction our people faces and mourns, and then, with the help of God, overcomes. Rabbi Alex Israel of the Pardes Institute for Jewish Studies argues that we should actually embrace the emptiness of the day. Tisha B'Av stands aside as a day that has no Torah reading or pew team other than the Book of Lamentations, a day that if observed fully 
shocks the system by replicating a feeling of loss, a moment which literally leaves you sitting on the floor, unwashed and ungroomed, with nothing to read or study which offers you any comfort. He says, a culture is marked by its institutions, its heroes, its happy days, and its sad days. And indeed, Tisha B'Av is one of those moments that crafts the Jewish soul more than any other. And I don't want to raise or rouse it with speeches and lectures. For me, this day breathes with the hushed, monotonous sound of dirges and silences. And perhaps then, in the grand hecticness of Judaism, we really need a day like Tisha B'Av to give us a full sense of life. There is gain and there is loss. There are high points and there are low. There is the busy fullness of Shabbat rest and there is the empty discomfort of Tisha B'Av. Personally, I resonate with the words of Rabbi Alan Liu. In his book, This is Real and You Are Completely Unprepared, Rabbi Liu makes it clear that to him, the real reason to observe Tisha B'Av is that it marks the vital first step on our journey into Teshuva. Tisha B'Av, for Rabbi Liu, is the beginning of the High Holy Days. We can regard the ninth of Av and the week surrounding it as a curse time, or we can regard the ninth of Av as a time when we are reminded that catastrophe will keep recurring in our lives until we get things right, until we learn what we need to learn from them. Tisha B'Av is the moment of turning, the moment when we turn away from denial and begin to face exile and alienation as they manifest in our lives, in our alienation and estrangement from God, and in our alienation and estrangement from ourselves and others. On the High Holy Days, we are called to remember both our shortcomings and our ability to remedy our failures with acts of kindness, love, and forgiveness. Not only as individual human beings, but actually as a greater Jewish community. And on Tisha B'Av, we are given the most honest and piercing communal tochacha imaginable a reminder of our lowest point. And just as one would never run a race without training, or sing without warming up, or do yoga without stretching, and ever expect the results to be helpful or even healthy, spiritual activity requires that first warm-up step. Our observance of this fast, then, is the beginning of our communal training that we will need to have a meaningful Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. They were amazing, a once-in-a-lifetime talent. You should have seen them. They broke up last week. It is my dear hope that if any of these perspectives resonated with you, that you will join us on Sunday morning at 9 in our chapel for our observance of Tisha B'Av. And while the reason that each of us may walk through that door will be different, ultimately, we will pray and study as a community along with our Jewish siblings across the world. And that act of unity, that may itself be reason enough. Shabbat Shalom. We begin the conclusion of our service with the words of Elenu, found on page 139. Please rise when you reach the page. Alenu the Shabbat Ladon Hakola, take you to Laliot Serbre sheets. Shaloa sanu ki goye haratzot, velo samanu ki mishpachot adama. Shaloa sam chelkenu kahem, vegoraleinu ki chuhamonam. Vanachnu korim, umishtachavim umodim. Lifne melech, bochei hamlachim, hakatosh baruchu. Shahu no teshamayim vi yoser aretz, umoshav yekarob ashamayim imo, ushchino tuzo, ushchino tuzo, begafe meromim. Hu eloheinu enod, emen bogeinu efesulato, kakatu vitorato, viadata hayom, viadata hayom, vashevota. Ki 
Adonai, who ha Elohim, Basha Mayim, the Al Haritz, the Al Haritz, Mitachat Enod, Venemar, the Adonai, the Melech Al Koharitz, Bayom Hahu, Bayom. As we prepare to recite Kaddish Yatom, the mourner's Kaddish, I invite the mourners among us to rise at this time so they may be supported and recognized by our community. Today, we mark the yard sites of the following. Abraham Aaron, Gertrude Blackstone, Adeline Borens, Luba Chaitin, Donna Cohen, Dora Dalgorf, Joseph Danson, Anne Dubin, Max Enkin, Samuel Fingold, Louis Fingold, Marilyn Gold, Goldie Goldstein, David Goodman, Serena Gross, Gerda Heichelheim, Charles Hertzman, Anne Eisen, Arthur Jacobs, Danielle Janine Trudeau, Aaron Kestenberg, Nathan Lackman, Morris Lehman, Julia Levine, Harvey Lehrer, Herbert Levitt, Grace Levy, Benjamin Lokash, Harry Mannheim, Bernard Mayer, Isaac Morgulis, Albert Musafia, Hilda Nissenbaum, so Sonia Nissenboim, Alec Nisker, John Pentern, Helen Pullen, Simon Ram, Janie Rigler, Ben Rosenberg, Jenny Saunders, Wilfred Schwab, Pearl Schwartz, Herbert Schaefer, Yetta Sherman, Helen Schleiser, Sonia Silverstein, Lottie Sinaski, Lena Stock, Sarah Stossel, Sophie Sweden, Benjamin Tennant, Bernice Thompson, Ronald Turk, Harvey Wallet, Fanny Weinreb, William Woolman, Steve Young, David Zenner. We remember two of those who have died most recently, whose families are in the period of Shloshim, Barbara Cass Mansfield, Richard Cole, Eva Dykstein, Eve Ennis, Dorothy Garfin Gilbert, Tanny Caden, Loren Credencer, Rabbi Dove Marmer, Melville Olsberg, Ruth Shurkin. Are there names to be added to our memorial this evening? As one community, we rise to support our mourners and praise God's holy name. Yit kadal v'yit kadash shemei rabah ba'alma divra chirute v'yamlich malchute v'chayechon u'v'yomechon v'chaye dechol beit Yisrael ba'agala u'v'izman kariv v'imru amen yehi shemei rabah mavorach le'olam u'lamei amaya yit barach v'yish tabach v'yit pa'ar v'yit romam v'yitnase v'yit hadar v'yit ale v'yit halal shemei dekudesha v'richu Le'ela min kol birchata v'shirata, tush b'chata v'nechamata, da'amiran ba'alma v'imru, amen. Yehei shlama raba min shemaya, v'chayim aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael v'imru, amen. Ose shalom b'mromav, hu ya'ase shalom, aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael v'imru, amen. May the source of peace and peace to all who mourn, comfort to all who are bereaved, and together we say, Amen. Oh, Found on page 439. Baruch Atadonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam, Borei Peri Hagafen. Baruch Atadonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam, Asher Kitshan Vimitzvotam, Virotzavanu, Vishabat Kotshobi Ahava Uvrotson, Inchilanu. 
Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat.